Hi, today we're going to talk about one of my biggest pet peeves, and that's people who allow their dog off leash in an area that requires a leash. So the first thing that I need to say is that I adore dogs. I love dogs to the extreme that I made my career out of dogs, and I work tirelessly at promoting healthy relationships with dogs, having a healthy lifestyle with our dogs, and dog rescue. So for those people that feel that they're allowed to allow their dog off leash, even though there's a leash law, there's a few things I want you to consider before you unsnap that leash. The first thing is not everybody likes dogs, or someone who has a dog might not like all breeds or feel a little uncomfortable about certain breeds. We also want to think about every other dog in the neighborhood. Just because your dog might be social and friendly doesn't mean another dog is going to want a strange dog approaching them and invading their space. Some dogs are very shy and they feel uncomfortable if a strange dog is approaching them, especially if that dog approaching them is approaching at a quick pace. There's also dogs that have had injuries, so maybe they're a little sore or a little sensitive to the touch. Maybe they have arthritis or, like Dexter, a neurological condition. These dogs typically don't like dogs coming up to them, putting their nose in their bum, or trying to say hello by jumping on their head. Then there's those people that are working really hard with their dog. They're trying to practice with their dog to ignore other dogs. Maybe they're working on their canine good citizen test or a therapy dog evaluation. So they're trying to get their dog to pay attention to them and not to other dogs. If they're out there on their walk trying to practice and your dog comes bouncing by, that's going to be really hard on them and you're going to set them up for failure. We also have our service dogs or our working dogs who are supposed to be paying attention to their handler and trying to ignore all the other distractions. If a service dog is working with their person and another dog comes up and runs into their face, they're not going to be able to do their job properly. And service dogs aren't required to have any kind of vest, so you might not know it's an actual service dog or a working dog. Not all dogs are friendly. Some dogs have behavioral issues, and their human partners are trying to work really hard at changing those behaviors. Having your dog rush up to them isn't going to help their training plan, and it might actually injure your dog in the process. You want to remember, if you're in a public place, and the law states your dog is supposed to be on leash, then you must follow that law. We don't get to pick and choose which laws we want to follow. If you want to have your dog off leash, then look for an off leash dog park or another area that's zoned for off leash play. Not just the neighborhood park that everyone feels is an off leash dog park and unsnaps their leash, but those that are actually designated by the city as an off leash area. So what does that mean when I'm out walking my dog? So for me, when I'm out walking Dexter, he's my family. He's my number one concern. I'm going to protect Dexter, and I want to make sure that no other dog comes rushing up to Dexter without our permission. I'm very proactive, so if I see an off-leash dog running up to me, there's a few things that I'm probably going to do to prevent that contact. So I'm going to tell you some of those things and hopefully you'll find them very helpful. So one of the first things that I usually throw into my routine is the traffic cop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand up really quickly and I'm going to put my hand out and say, go back, go back home. Because a lot of times that gesture will get a dog to stop really quickly and then you're able to move your dog away. My dog's contagious and aggressive. Even though Dexter is not contagious or aggressive, that might just get that oncoming dog parent to grab their dog quickly. I don't want to just say, my dog's shy, move away. Because that owner who irresponsibly let their dog off leash might just kind of take their time, maybe call their dog over to them. Where if I say we're contagious and aggressive, hopefully that owner is going to act quickly and get their dog to them fast. The next thing we can do is we can teach our dog a really reliable sit-stay. I'm going to put Dexter on a sit-stay right behind me and I'm going to traffic cop my hand again and I'm going to say, stop, my dog's contagious and aggressive. If the owner doesn't get their dog quickly back to them, I might grab the treats that are in my pocket and I'm actually going to throw them at the dog and then over the dog's head behind him so that hopefully he'll smell those treats, start eating them and get distracted by them 
while I walk away with Dexter pretty swiftly. The other thing that we can use is an ear horn. And with this, you want to make sure that if you're going to use an ear horn, that your own dog is very comfortable with the noise. So you can test it out first in your house. Maybe have your dog at the other end of the house or outside and just squeeze it down a little bit so it just makes a little noise. And if your dog doesn't startle, toss him a treat. If he seems a little paranoid, then this might not be the best option. But if your dog's not afraid of the air horn, the air horn is a really nice option because a lot of dogs are a little nervous of noises. And if you're out for your walk and that dog's approaching, again, we can swing our dog kind of behind us, grab our air horn and spray it right towards the dog. Nothing's gonna come out but noise. And hopefully that'll startle the dog just in time for you to move away quickly. And if the owner's behind them, to grab their dog. The next thing we have is an actual umbrella. So just like the air horn, I need to make sure my dog's comfortable with the umbrella. So what we can do with an umbrella is we can have it as one, we can kind of have it as a beat stick, so we can have it if we ever need it, but I can pop it out really quickly from my pocket and just expand it. And again, a lot of dogs are going to be nervous or at least stop from that. And if I need to, I can kind of push it like this to kind of scare that dog or prevent and give a little bit of a block between that dog and Dexter. We also have some citronella spray. This is another option. The downside with citronella spray is that if we spray it at the oncoming dog, if it's windy at all, that actually can wave back to your dog too. But we wanna think about our pros and cons, you know, what's gonna be the risk. So citronella spray is another option. Along the lines of citronella spray is also pepper spray. So pepper spray is gonna be a little more stronger, of course, but again, that, that wave of the air might come back to your dog. Um, recently, I also have bear spray. I just don't happen to have it with me, but bear spray is another option because usually that can shoot about 30 or 50 feet. So that oncoming dog doesn't have to be close to you at all. He can actually be at a distance and that's gonna help prevent any extra spray coming back to your dog as well. One of the other options that we have is a taser. Now, taser guns are not legal in all states, so you want to make sure that it's something that you're allowed to carry. If you're going to purchase one online, obviously it won't ship to you if you're in a state that doesn't allow it. And with this taser gun that I have, um, I can actually shoot it right out of the, the holster. So I don't even have to pull it out of the holster. So I can just unlock it and quickly, and I just hold it down while it tases and it touches the whole thing. So all I have to do is kind of touch that dog in any way. If you're gonna use a taser gun, just like these other options, you might get your dog used to that noise of that taser gun shooting out without starting it, of course, but just at firing out so he's not too scared of that. And you wanna be really careful that your dog's not in the mix. The other thing that we can do for our small dogs is we can actually pick them up. So if an oncoming dog's rushing at me, I can pick Dexter up. Now he is just about that size where if he was any bigger, I wouldn't be able to do that. Now picking your dog up actually has a pretty big risk involved because when you pick your dog up, sometimes that oncoming dog thinks of it as a little more exciting and they might actually get a little more reactive about it and even a little more jumpy. So depending on where you are, if you're able to pick your dog up and put them inside something, you know, inside a truck bed, in, on top of a car, inside a garbage can, you know, inside a, a gate, you know, those might be options. And then finally, we have the unthinkable. You know, if that oncoming dog actually makes contact with your dog and you're not able to stop them, so if that other dog is attacking your dog, you're going to want to cause as much injury as possible to that other dog to get him to stop. So one of the things that you can try is to try to get that other dog's back legs. So you're going to grab those back legs and you're going to swing low and hard and throw that other dog as far away as you can while you try to swiftly move you and your dog to somewhere safe. If you're in an environment where there's other people around, certainly start screaming and asking for help. We want to get as many people involved as possible so that there's less injury to you and your own dog.
if that dog's attached to your dog or attacking your dog and you're not able to grab his back legs, you know, try to go for those eyes, you know, and try to grab maybe his collar and you can grab that collar of the other dog and, and twist that collar to try to tighten it. You can punch that dog in the face and on the side and in the ribs. And I know this sounds unthinkable, but you'd be surprised at how many people that I personally know that have been in this scenario and their dogs, there's been some dogs that have died and there's been some dogs that have had serious injuries being ripped open to the sides and barely survived. So it's our job to do whatever we possibly can as a dog parent to protect our own dogs and to save them. And this can be really scary stuff because that other dog who's off leash might even be attacking you in the process. If you're one of those people that allow your dog off leash in an area that requires a leash, I have to say I'm pretty disappointed. I'm pretty disappointed that you feel you're above the law and that my rights and my carefree walk that's supposed to be fun and enjoyable with my dog is at risk. When I'm going for a walk and I see an off-leash dog, that means I'm going to change my direction. I'm not going to take a chance that your dog's going to stay with you and he's not going to come running up to my dog. I don't care if your dog's friendly. My dog doesn't want to say hello to your dog. So I hope that you decide after listening to this video that you're going to keep your dog on a leash if that's the required law. And if you want to let your dog off leash, you're going to find an approved dog park and have fun at that dog park with other dogs who want to say hello to your dog. Other dogs that want to play with dogs and the people that enjoy other dogs and other dog breeds. And for those of you who often run into off-leash dogs, I hope you find these tools helpful. They've definitely come handy for me and they've helped some of my friends as well.